In this section, we discuss Fisher equation and the holding period yield. Here is the Fisher equation right here. It says that the nominal interest rate is equal to the real interest rate plus expected inflation. Actually, whenever you see interest rates published in the press, all those rates are nominal interest rates. If you go to your bank and you see those interest rate boards published everywhere, all those rates are nominal interest rates. When you calculate a rate of return, that rate of return is nominal. Nominal means it reflects inflation expectations. As you know, inflation risk premium is one that is basically included in the pricing of securities. And so, what is not observable is the real interest rate, IR. This is not observable and has to be adjusted. It has to be estimated. And so the Fisher equation enables us to do that by saying that the real interest rate that is priced into a financial asset is equal to the nominal interest rate which you observe minus inflation expectations. So, for example, let's say you want to buy a one-year bond which promises to pay you 5%. That 5% is nominal. If the coupon rate on the bond that you're about to buy right now is 5%, it is a nominal, uh, it's a nominal interest rate. In other words, it already reflects inflation expectations of, over uh, the next one year. So, for example, if inflation is expected to rise at the rate of 3% over the, over the next 12 months, then it means that after inflation has been accounted for, all that you really are earning on that bond is 2% which is your nominal rate of 5% minus the 3% of expected inflation to get the 2% real interest rate. And as you can therefore see, real interest rate more accurately reflects the true cost of borrowing because it signifies how much rate of return that you would have earned over and above inflation or from the borrower standpoint, what the true cost, the effective cost of uh, the loan that you have taken out because it is how much over and above inflation that you would have paid the uh, lender. And therefore, when it real interest rates are low, there are greater incentives to borrow and, of course, less incentives to lend. So we note here the difference between ex ante real interest rate and ex post real interest rate. Ex ante, um, which is really what is defined in the Fisher equation, um, is one that takes into consideration expected level of inflation. Ex post means that inflation adjustment is based on observed level of inflation. So rather than use uh, inflation that is expected over the period to come, you are using inflation currently observed for the period. So obviously, from a valuation standpoint, it would make better sense to use X ante um, expected inflation so as to obtain ex ante real interest rate since uh, you're making an investment today for a period um, going for, for the period going forward a couple of examples are shown here so for example nominal rate is five percent inflation is expected to be zero then uh, your real rate would be equal to your no nominal rate and here, if inflation is expected to be twice the nominal rate, then your real rate would be negative. You would suffer quite a bit if you made an investment. But you would like it quite a bit if you are a borrower because real interest rate is negative. So this picture from your textbook shows what the uh, nominal rate and uh, estimated real rate have been over the past several years. And uh, this is from a study uh, conducted by one of the authors of the textbook, uh, Dr. Mishkin. And you can see that there have been times when uh, the real rate uh, was actually negative. Right here, um, up on in the uh, between uh, uh, 95 uh, up until the early 80s. And also in the period shortly before the financial crisis broke. So these are generally not good signs. They tell us of uh, bad things to, to come whenever the real rate uh, is negative. And finally, we note here the difference between um, 
interest rate and holding period yield. Well, interest rate we already have discussed. That's the cost of a loan. The holding period yield, or also referred to as holding period return, is suggesting how much you can expect to earn from any investment. Say, for example, you make an investment, and let's take a bond, which is what we've been talking about. If you invest in a bond, you're going to receive coupon payments, and if you sell the bond prior to maturity and make money, then you'll get capital gains. Expressed as a percent of the price you paid, the coupon as a percent of price is called your that, that'll be your current yield and this would be your capital gains yield so if you add those two together you calc you're calculating what's called your holding period rate of return so holding period rate of return or holding period yield is exactly what it says it is which is what your rate of return is during the period that you held the instrument regardless of the time period over which you held it so if you, for example, made $50 in coupon interest income, you purchased this instrument for 780 and you sell it later for 850 then you have two types of incomes here, $50 in interest income plus capital gains equal to, what is this, $70, which is 850 minus 780 so expressed as a percent of the price, which is what you see here and here. Your uh, current yield is 6.4%, which is 50 out of um, the price of 780. And your capital gains yield is 890, 8.97%. You add those two, it's 15.38%. Now keep in mind that this is a generic definition that can be applied to any form of investment whereupon you receive a cash flow in the interim or over the cause of the investment and then you dispose of the instrument for some gain or loss. This could also be a, a capital gains, uh, a, a, a negative capital gains yield. All right, so it could be a stock, it could be a real estate, pro, uh, uh, real estate investment, it could be anything at all. So if it is a real estate investment, then this would be the annual income, rental income that you may have received, and this is your capital gain, both of which express as the percent of the price you paid to make that real estate investment will provide you with your holding period yield. It's a short segment of this presentation, and that's it.